Coming up next, do California schools have the right stuff? Our public schools are under pressure. Will districts have the resources and support? Will teachers have the right training and materials? And will this be enough to ensure that our students meet today's and tomorrow's challenges? All that and more coming up on today's special report. And now, here are your hosts, Elizabeth Nunziato and Ruben Grundy. Good day. Every poll over the past decade has shown that Californians care most about the education of their kids. There is tremendous pressure to prepare our students for 21st century citizenship and to compete in the global economy. Our students, teachers, and even principals are being held accountable. Everyone must do his or her part. California has responded with a clear and compelling mission. For the next few minutes, we'll take a look at the new systematic approach to school reform, and we'll hear about our progress from state and local leaders. It is all centered around new legislation, particularly AB 466. For the state perspective, let's go to our reporter Mark Fulmer at the state capitol. Thanks, Ruben. You know, the state is making all of this happen, but we want to know what this really means. We asked Secretary of Education, Kerry Mazzoni. It's the boldest, uh, most important professional development initiative that, that this nation has seen. This sounds like a huge undertaking. It is a huge undertaking uh, because it means almost every teacher in this state. And we are the largest state in the country and we have more students than any other state. Uh, it's significant and it really puts California out in front. This is the first time a systematic approach is being implemented with five clearly defined and interrelated components. This really comes down to high standards and high expectations. A quality education for every student, every day, at every grade level, and for every year. The first component and cornerstone for this effort resides in the state content standards. We've dramatically changed the expectations. Every student will have the opportunity to meet or exceed California's world-class standards in English language arts, mathematics, history, social science, and science. But what we do have is this common understanding of what is expected of all kids. And that's what I think we need to understand, that the standards serve as a guide about what all children should do. Is everybody there? Not everybody's there. But at least we'll have everybody, including the educational community as well as the public, the parents will understand what is expected for all children to know. And it can't get done without materials, which takes us to the second component, quality instructional programs. Students will have local board approved instructional materials for all core subject areas based on the state content standards and curricular framework. Quality instructional materials are systematic, they're sequential, and our newly adopted materials are aligned to our California standards. Sometimes you hear people say, well, should I teach my curriculum or should I try to teach to the standards? Well, they need to be one and the same. My curriculum needs to be aligned to the standards and it needs to follow the sequence from grade to grade. And that's what our new instructional materials do for us. A high quality instructional program embeds high quality instructional strategies for our teachers. In our district, we had a huge sense of urgency. Our children were not doing well. They were not reading, our scores were dismal, but even beyond our scores, we would go into our classrooms and we would see that our teachers really didn't have materials that they needed and also that our children were doing a variety of activities rather than a sequential program. And so our board and our superintendent took a strong stand and they made the decision that all schools below the 50th percentile in second and third grade, they were mandated to adopt the materials. And some people think that's bad. You know, some people said, well, you didn't get enough buy-in, you know. But we really did. We worked with our union. We worked with teacher groups. We worked with administrator groups. But the board said, you know what, we have an ethical responsibility to make sure kids have standards-based materials, and we can't wait for a big process. We just have to do this, and we have to have faith that our teachers will come along. And the truth of the matter is, they really have. I just, just haven't seen the full implementation of instructional materials in the classroom. And, I, and from visiting low-performing schools, it is so obvious that that is the gap. That's where the gap falls, is where uh, materials are not fully implemented. Because, again, people feel that you, you have the choice whether you want to te well, one use them or not. And, and really, that's not an option anymore. The third component is integrated professional development. Teachers and site administrators will receive intensive training on these instructional programs. 
with opportunities to practice and receive additional support. This professional development is funded for teachers and instructional aides by AB 466 and for principals by AB 75. The crucial thing, I think, is the nature and the quality of training around instructional materials which are going to drive instruction in the classroom. I think districts have to be very, very thoughtful about choosing the provider for the training, considering whether to provide the training themselves, because it's absolutely going to drive what goes on in each and every classroom. So professional development has to be in-depth, but it also has to be ongoing, so, so it's, it's, it's got to be long but deep. So the professional development opportunity that this current legislation makes available is very different from anything that we've really experienced in the past. It recognizes that everybody who impacts the student needs support, professional development that is ongoing, that's not episodic, but that is a part of, of the work of running the school or the district. This is really the first time that we've looked at the professional development for the instructional assistant, for the teacher, and for the instructional leader um, as being built around the same content. It's all with the teacher. See, you know, it means that the, the one person that affects the children the most is the classroom teacher, not me downtown. You know, I'm, my job is to make sure the teachers get the stuff and that the teachers have the materials and the teachers have training. But the one that affects the children are the teachers. And when they see these successful test scores, then they start believing that this is what they're doing is really working. The challenge is that I have young teachers who are in a, uh, a classroom with less than one year of experience. So my um, situation is that I need to make sure that those kids and those teachers had the proper staff development. So once we get the discipline nailed, which we have right now in the majority of the classrooms, then the learning will result and then we'll start seeing student achievement. And it's wonderful because I'm seeing it right now as I look at the test scores every six weeks I see improvement. It's not something you just write a contract for. You've got to think about it, plan it, organize it, and, and personally I think there's a need to get the buy-in from your teachers and principals about the training that you're going to be providing so that they embrace it rather than resist it. It's a district responsibility to get as many teachers involved as possible and also to have an alternate plan for those teachers who for one reason or another can't make the uh, commitment of the 120 hours, that there be an alternate plan to equip all teachers with the same knowledge and the same body of skills, because they're all being held accountable for the same outcome students. It's only fair to do it that way. The fourth component is leadership and support. Ultimately, it is the administrator's job to get results, to convey the vision and to provide the support, the organization, and the management for quality instruction. Teachers want school site support in order to be effective. Principals and vice principals will be trained to provide this instructional leadership. District staffs will seek to actively encourage their principals and teachers to take advantage of these state incentive programs. Leadership, as I see it, is defined across the board. Uh, all of us have a responsibility to take uh, the, re the new resources available to build a standards-based system, focus on uh, the standards related to content, and then apply what we know about professional development um, uh, to have the specific outcomes that we need. Our superintendent and our board funded coaches for every classroom. And so there's a co you know, it's not like going to five days of professional development and then going back and being in isolation. You go to five days of professional development and you go back to your school and there's a coach there to support you and to say, oh, you know, I don't exactly remember how I do that section. The coach says, let me come on in and help you with that. Let me show you or let's have a conversation about it. And I think when teachers feel that there's support, there's more buy-in and they're more willing to do that. And then they have, when everybody's using, this is another critical thing, when everybody in the school is using the same materials versus one teacher using one book and another, there's a way to come together for some professional conversations. And when you can do that, that also makes for a richer environment in your school. If I'm struggling with something, and my room partner who's teaching the same grade level is great at it and we bring our kids work because we're sort of almost at the same place and I look and I say oh gee how'd you get them to do that 
that really makes for a nice environment of collegiality at the school, working together. And I think teachers need that and like it. And I think it's also important to remember that AB 75 is only a part of the training that principals receive. There are two tiers uh, of initial training. Many districts, including our own, run other training for, for administrators. So while this one is, is more focused on uh, curriculum content and somewhat less so on uh, uh, personnel and finance and, and technology, a lot of these other areas are pushing hard on leadership development and that's one of our top priorities in our district. The final component is accountability. Monitoring student progress is a key part of this new approach. By requiring professional accountability, California's communities will have confidence in their public school system. What accountability means is you're just pounded on and pounded on and pounded on without any support. That's not going to work because people are not going to respond to that. But I think if you ask people to be accountable but you give them the support that they need to do their jobs better and better over time, I think they will embrace that, particularly if you involve them in the process of considering what the training should look like. The, um advent of the California standards test makes it very clear that the, the content standards are what drives the accountability system and what defines success for students, for schools, for school districts. And I think that is hugely important and it's in the forefront now of everyone's mind. Having said that, I think we still have to realize that that's one level of assessment. That is summative assessment that gives us the big picture look that says to a teacher, how did I do this year? How did my class do this year compared to my class last year? How's my school doing compared to another school? How's my district doing compared to last year or another district? That's a very important look and it's sort of the public accountability piece. It's the, the uh, final uh, piece of the journey for each school year. But very important, equally important, that districts have to recognize is that the monitoring, the accountability along the way is uh, something that the new instructional materials provide in a way that is aligned with the instruction. And that's a hugely important thing. And I think when we look at formative assessment that is aligned with the instruction, the answer to what now is in the next piece of the instructional material, which gives us the tool to move forward, to remedy student deficits. I think that's a hugely important thing. And I think at the district level, we also um, don't want to be surprised at the outcome. And when teachers are looking at full implementation of their materials, frequent common assessments which be, are provided in the materials, there aren't surprises at the end. There's time along the way to gauge our progress and to make instructional decisions that will take us closer to the desired outcome at big picture time, the state testing. You're probably wondering what results we should expect. For starters, increased student achievement in reading, language arts, mathematics, history, social science, and science. Another result is that we have a well-educated, highly literate adult population. State initiatives like this take money. That's right. And this is the funding available through AB 466 and AB 75. For teachers, the district receives $2,500 for reading and mathematics. For instructional aides or paraprofessionals, the district receives $1,000. For principals, the district receives $3,000, with $1,000 matching funds through the Gates Foundation. So, what does a school district need to do if it wants to play in this ballpark? What are the requirements? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Here are the eight key steps for implementing an effective LEA professional development program. Step one, obtain school district board commitment and superintendent support for professional development and newly adopted standards-based instructional program materials. Step two, select and purchase board approved instructional program materials for students and teachers prior to starting the professional development activities. Step three, determine grade levels and subject matter areas for the first year. Step four, select or develop professional development programs. Step five, set dates and inform teachers and principals. 
Step six, implement and monitor intensive institute professional development activities. Step seven, implement and monitor follow-up professional development activities and practicums. Step eight, work with the Department of Education on fiscal and program reporting requirements. These steps sound easy when you think of the impact this will ultimately have on California students. Districts should move rapidly on the adoption of their K-8 instructional materials and on their high school instructional materials that are locally adopted in the four academic areas so that we can move in a timely manner to make sure that all teachers have instructional materials aligned to our standards and are ready to use those in their classrooms. A lot of times we're looking at what's happening outside the box. Now it's time to focus back into the box. And when we have change, I think the, the, the answer is right within the box. And it's basically staying focused, looking at student achievement, looking at the data, implementing a strong program, uh, a high quality program, uh, training our teachers, quality staff development, and the most important, good pedagogy, excellent teaching. And with that comes results. So I think the model is there um, and uh, it's up to us to uh, get to work, roll up our sleeves, uh, get rid of some of the old baggage that we have around professional development and how it should happen from the top down. It's really supporting schools and teachers and principals who are out there doing the work on a daily basis to do the best that, that we know what we can do in edu public education for our students. We know that, it, that you can, we can make a difference, that teachers can make a difference, and I think we should get excited about that, that we no longer have to worry about, well, you know, the parents aren't uh, able to participate, or there's a said they're second language learners. Kids can learn, and I think once we have the, 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 the standards, the materials, the research-based materials, and we provide the professional development, I think we'll see gains. We have seen gains. In there are schools, not just in California, but throughout the United States, where we have seen schools that have more than 50, 60, 70 percent of kids on re reduced lunch that are making gains, great academic gains. So I think it can be done. You really just need to take action. You know, whatever system you have in your district, you need to get it going because we can wait and wait and wait and then kids are left farther and farther behind. And what I always say, said to my staff when I was a principal is, you know, they would say, oh, but these second graders are, you know, really struggling. And I'd say, this is their only time in school. You know, you just can't wait. They only have one opportunity for kindergarten, one for first, one for second. Uh, what I'm concerned about here is our propensity in education has not been to stay the course. We, we fall over to the next fad and, and keep changing and changing and changing. So I think uh, the governor's been wise uh, and, and I think that the message is let's stay the course and let's let these reforms take hold and develop and make sure that they're focused on improving instruction in the classroom, not on some peripheral activity. So it looks like the public school system is getting back on track. It really sounds to me like they are serious about every student, every grade level, and every year. Thank you so much for being with us today. And what is this one? Oh, blank. There's a word in my lesson that is the plural of radius. Instead of I have one radius, I have two what? What is that word? Oh, say it again, say Marvin. Oh,